all of the blossoms on this apple tree are pretty much gone now. I guess they only stay for like a week. It's kind of sad. Be nice if it would stay that way all year or all summer. All things, all good things must come to an end, I guess. I wonder if those blossoms turn into, you can see a few blossoms there, yeah. This whole tree was like that. I wonder if that's what turns into the apples. Like here, look at this. I wonder if that's what turns into the apples. I've never had an apple tree before. It's fascinating. Nature is fascinating, isn't it? It's crazy. So I'm just letting the dogs out now, letting them stretch their legs and get some air, do their morning business. And then I've got to head off. I've got to do some trucking today. I've got a trailer waiting for me, it's empty. It's not supposed to be empty. By noon, there should be something on it. So I've got to make sure that happens. That's my job. <laughs> I gotta wake myself up here though. Here's our trailer for today. 53 foot flatbed roll tight. Pull it on up to Arburg and put some stuff in it. It's the nicest one we got. We got another one over here. But I'm guessing I'll probably be using that one tomorrow maybe, or maybe someone else is using it today. 6.05, I choose you. Let's do our pre-trip on it and let's get on the road. We've got a two hour drive ahead of us today. Check it. Bit of an air leak there. I'm pretty sure I know what's causing that. So I can pull it out again. Go take a look. See if I'm right. Yeah, you see that little little dip in there? a little bit cold this morning. There you go. Now that should have fixed it. shine works. Usually does. And there you go. It worked. Told you. <laughs> you thought I was crazy. That's how you fix an air leak on the glass hands. Just spit on it. Okay. All tires filled with air. I'm gonna go around here do the rest of the pre-trip on this trailer. 
There's the mud flaps are all here. Oh yeah, have you guys ever wondered what these orange lights are for in the center? See, they're not the signals, right? This is the trailer with the backwards wiring. It works. Those lights are controlled up here, the same place where this axle is controlled at. It's for, you would never use it with this trailer because it has the, the walls on here. But before the roll tight walls were put on here, it was just an open flatbed, right? And what you would do is if you're hauling a wide load or an oversized load of any kind, you would turn those on to let people know behind you, hey, look out, I'm a little bigger than usual. See, it's in here. Ah, see? On or off, you turn it on. Now let's go to the back. And those lights should be flashing. There you go, see? And that way, if you didn't have this big cover on here and it was just an open deck, you had a wide load, a high load, anything oversized, that lets everyone behind you know to look out. Just gotta turn them off right now before we get on the road. Because MOT will not like it, neither will DOT, if you have those on when you don't need it. And this one here, that raises that back tire. We've talked about that before. See? Now I only have two axles on the ground. When you're running on toll roads, a lot of toll roads are charged by the axle. So on this truck, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six axles. Let's say they charge five bucks an axle. Well, it's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. But if I lift that back axle up like this, now I only have five axles on the ground. Now they're only gonna charge us $25 instead of 30. So that saves on tolls. The biggest thing is it saves on wear and tear. If those tires aren't touching the ground, they're not wearing out. And also, if you're going long distances and you have a lighter load, you have that axle up over a long distance, it'll save you fuel. Because now I'm only pulling two axles, I'm not pulling three. Less drag. Physics. Science. Thought trucking was just an ordinary job. Uh -uh. Feels good to be back at it. You guys think our goose friends will be here again? They're here every day, okay? It's just part of the day. They're usually right on this exit, probably near the corner on the left side, and then around the corner there's a little, a little a lake, I would say, where they like to take their morning baths. I like to remind them to stay off the road. Every day. Every day. Where are you guys? They've gone into hiding a little more. Huh. Maybe I scared him a little too much. Oh, there he is. There he is, right there. Mm -hmm. How's it going, bud? Just you today? Where's all your buddies? Just one? I guess I'm doing too good of a job scaring them away. Pretty soon I won't have anyone to say good morning to anymore. Which is a good thing. I don't like it when they hang around the roads like that, but they like to make their nests and raise their babies in those long, in the long grass and the ditches, right? And they've been coming here for, you know, generation after generation after generation. They've been landing in this area long before this highway was here. So every year they come back from Mexico or the U.S. or wherever they go for winter. And they look around and everything's different. I don't blame them, but... You know, if they go a little further north, I think they'd be a lot happier. You know, go like north of, uh, like into the Inner Lake or north of Selkirk, even further north. The further north they go, the more secluded they'll be. They can go a few hours further north and never see a human being. Oh, but they like to land in the city here. They're city birds. City goose. They like to live dangerously. 
Oh, we got something on the shoulder up ahead here. I'm trying to slow down and let this guy pass me, but he's slowing down too. It's Manitoba law that you move over for emergency vehicles and tow trucks. Anything with flashing amber lights, flashing red lights, flashing blue lights. And anyone, you should move over for anyone on the highway. And you gotta slow down to 60 kilometers an hour. Which is about, just below 40 miles an hour. It's a big ticket if you don't, if you get caught whizzing through here. I'd say probably about 75% of people don't even slow down. Whew. And probably at least 40% of people don't even move over. They just <laughs> right past the tow truck. They'll only slow down if it's a cop. Which is uh, not fair to the tow truck drivers, that's for sure. Looks like Arberg's finally turning green. It's kind of nice, eh? Took him long enough. <laughs> I brought my jacket along with me today just in case because usually it's colder up here than it is at home. But we're finally getting to that season where the sun's shining and all the trees have turned green again. Look at all this lawn everywhere. Oh, so nice after a long winter. I believe I'm picking up a 30 foot piece today. It's a nice truck. I'd love to have a truck like that. You see how much nicer this place looks when the sun's out and there's no snow? Well, you remember how this looked in winter time? It looked so so miserable and cold. I'm surprised there's not more people out enjoying it. I guess they're all at work, just like me. But at least for my job, I get to still be outside and enjoy the sunshine. I'd really hate to be locked inside all the time sitting in a little cubicle. All the nice days of summer you would just miss. They just fly right by. Now at least I gotta travel around a little bit and see it. Enjoy it. Look at that. Man, that turned green fast. Last week this wasn't green yet. How about you where you guys live? Is it summer there already? Or is it still winter? I know in northern Manitoba up in Churchill they still got a lot of snow. Crazy, eh? I don't know how they convince people to live up there. Especially when you have the internet and you can see how much nicer the weather is in other parts of the world. And you just stay up there? The job must pay a lot, I'll tell you much. I'll tell you that much. You don't just stay up there for fun. You stay up there for money. I mean, that's why we're all here, right? We're here in Manitoba for money. At this point, originally we all came here fleeing some kind of oppressive government. But, as you can see, you only, you usually only flee one government to be met with the next. There 
she is. There she is, isn't she beautiful? She's beautiful because I put her there. That's why she's beautiful. <laughs> okay, okay. I get it, I get it. Let's just show you real quick what we're dealing with. Oh, no. oh boy, how can I get this? Oh boy. All right, so this is all going to Plainview, Texas. Way down there in Texas. It's the whole load. They'll probably add something to the back or add something to the load one way or another. And uh, I think next week it's gonna be warm enough for me to start bringing my, my gas pressure washer to work. I'm gonna wash my truck down every day and get her all shiny, as shiny as I can get her. I do realize she's got a little bit more rust than paint. But she's got a lot of spirit. She's got a good spirit. So we'll, uh, we'll shine her up as much as we can. And while I'm here, if I have extra time, I'm gonna come through and clean out the inside of these trailers as well. Because over time, you know, even when you go through the Blue Beacon truck wash, they'll wash the outside of the trailer, wash the outside of the truck. Unless you specifically pay them to do so, they're not gonna come inside the trailer here and wash the inside. And over the years, little bit by little bit, it accumulates, right? No one's asked me to do it or anything, but I pull these roll tights a lot and I want them to be clean and shiny. So when I have time, hopefully I'll have some time when it gets hot, I'm gonna take the pressure washer in here and uh, when the trailer's empty, obviously, I don't think I need to tell you that, but I'm gonna wash down the interior of these as well, make them all look new again, as new as I can. Because I'm the roll tight guy. I'm the one who uses these trailers the most locally here to go and uh, to go and pick up all the freight for the highway drivers, and uh, they're not going to get them cleaned out on the inside on the road. I can tell you that they they probably won't do that. So I'll do it. How about that? If it's going to be hooked up to my truck, it's going to be clean. If I have any say in it, I just can't bring my pressure washer to work every day. We live in Manitoba. It's the climate. Uh, I, the climate prevents me from. Uh, washing things every day and also time you know sometimes we're just really really busy I have seen your comments about that it's, it's just over time it, it happens it, it doesn't get on the freight or anything it's just yeah it bothers me but that's why I'm gonna fix it there. so what I'm gonna do now is I'm dropping this trailer here it's all ready for whatever they need it for uh, whoever's gonna hook onto it next it's in the loaded lineup I'm gonna go hook up to an empty van trailer and go do a quick swap in Winnipeg, go pick up a loaded one, drop off the emptied one. We are looking for trailer 5071B. And it's right here. One, two, three, four, that's ours. But like usual, I'm gonna hook onto it and turn around. It works better when I hook onto the back of my truck much faster that way, much more streamlined. Sort of, I mean my long wheelbase doesn't make anything really streamlined, but that's okay. I like the long wheelbase. One request if they ever got me a different truck other than this one would be I want to keep the long wheelbase it's really handy having all this walking area and working area between the cab and the trailer it also looks cool that suspension is adjusting right there that's fine that's not an air leak oh look all new bolts here well these are new doors Ah, recently replaced the doors. Nice. Hello, are you clean? Well, that's weird. The, the roof at the front there is a different roof than they must have had to replace that too. Let's in more light than this back here. So it needs a sweep, but it's not bad. I mean, I've seen a lot worse. It needs a little sweep, but it's not bad. So I'm going to get into Winnipeg. I'll sweep it when we get there. I 
believe this is my new trailer. I put the empty one in the back already. I'm looking for 5174. 5174B. That's the one. Once again, make sure that there's no leaks. Seems like that spit is still holding from this morning. <laughs> Let's roll these up before I forget. that the handle is nicely secured in there. This belly box looks brand spanking new. Wow, I haven't seen one this new in a long time. Nice. Some people have asked what we put in there. Anything you can fit in there. Sometimes we need a bit of extra space. That's looking nice. All the hoses and wires. Up off the ground, there's air in the tires. Let's see what's in here. Come on. Boxes to the front now it says look up to make sure that that top latch hooks into the trailer properly beautiful beautiful mud flap those are important inflated tires just as important yeah look at this brand new ramps under here Nice. This is obviously one of our uh, newer belly boxes. I like. I like. How's it going? Alrighty. So we're gonna park this trailer and park the truck, jump in the pickup, and go home. I have my load lined up for tomorrow morning already. I'm actually picking up a trailer in Steinbach. So I'm coming to work, picking up the semi, going back back to Steinbach, grabbing a trailer. We're taking that trailer up to Winnipeg Beach. I'm gonna put it right in here. That's a good spot, isn't it? What do you guys think? What do you guys think? You guys feel good about it? I feel good about it. I got a good feeling about that spot right there. Put her in there. to this 50-52 here. Much closer. I'm like right in the center of the two. Let's go see if we hit the concrete. Nice, I'm getting better. Not exactly centered, but oh, it's on the concrete. First try. 
hacia ello. Hey, Chev. Chevy. Wiener. Commander. Salute you. Wait, I did it the wrong hand. Oh, no. He noticed. You did it wrong. I want to see you do 10 push-ups by Wednesday. Man, you're, you're a hard boss, man. <laughs> Everyone knows you're the boss. I know. I'm the boss. He's just the commander. I am the supreme leader. Isn't that right? <laughs> commander of the Galactic Federation. Hey, Diesel. How's it going, man? Everyone's accounted for except for Brett. She's at work right now. She's working. Uh, actually, she should, be, she should be getting off really soon. She'll be home in about 20 minutes, half hour or so, depending on if she's stopped on the way home from work for anything. But I think she's coming home. I had a lot to say in the vlog today. I had to cut a whole bunch of it out. This vlog would have been 45 minutes long. So apparently I was very chatty. There's another day tomorrow though. We'll talk more then. Thanks for watching today. If you don't mind, hit that subscribe button. Helps me out a lot. Hit the like button. Helps me out the most and it's free to do. Just a little click down there. And we'll see you tomorrow.